au kwa sahani giza pro box <laughs> i'm told that's the new by skelly yeah <laughs> your pro box your mira no no, no, no. So all the non Kenyans in the room are just wondering what just happened? Yes. <laughs> This is how we invite stories in our culture. So everywhere from Zanzibar to Mwanza to Kitale to Lamu to probably the edges of Busia and into Uganda. You say that one word, paukwa, and you know, hadithi hadithi. A story comes. So, my story is about three things. A bookworm, a red pen, and a frustrated Kenyan. Let's start with the bookworm. That was me. As a child, I was that kid, was always in books. And the books that I used to read, courtesy of being a young Kenyan child, buying books at textbook center or rather getting my mother to buy me books at TBC, were usually famous five. Anyone remember? We are the famous five. Yeah. Secret Seven. Nancy Drew. Adi Boys. They're all coming. Everyone's yeah. When I got a little older, Sweet Dreams. Sweet Valley High. Do you hear any Kenyan books in this narrative? No. Yeah. People didn't look like me in the books that I read. But the emotions were the same. The trials were the same. The feelings were so familiar because that's the wonderful thing about stories. It doesn't care where you're from. It just cares that you're human. So that was me, the little bookworm. Fast forward um, to post-university. I'm also a firstborn, so I always do the right thing. And my parents, despite me wanting to do a creative career, said, no, 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 and hires people who are creative. So go to school and get a proper degree. So I did. And for the next almost 20 years, did the right thing. And I enjoyed doing the right thing. And I got the chance to work in public health. And that for me was a career of meaning because I got to go out into the field and to work, you know, um, really work with individuals who were suffering on such a basic level. And it enabled me to connect with them and bring some hope and dignity into their lives. One thing though, is that whenever we were working on proposals or reports, Mwihaki's office came to be known as the office you needed to pass through before that report leaves because she is a grammar Nazi and she looks for typos and she does edits without even being asked. So, you know, my little red pen was this thing that people came to rely on. And I found this out um, on my, second, my first job actually when I was leaving The regional director told me, no, my second job. Regional director mentioned the only reason that we actually decided to hire you, I mean, to see you for the interview, despite you not having enough years of experience, was yours was the only um, letter that we got without a single typo. And after my, sec my third job at the going away party, apparently everyone started talking about this red pen and I was like, oh, sorry. I didn't realize I was not being invited to make comments. <laughs> But it was who I was, because all those years of reading such wonderful books gave me an innate understanding of grammar and structure and syntax. And I couldn't help myself because I hate typos. And then I got the chance to travel the world. In my last, um, uh, my most recent, let me say, job. <laughs> um, I got to travel to countries on this continent that I had only heard about and was so excited about. I'm like, oh, I'm going to Accra, ah, watch out. And I'd get to Accra and I'd be like, oh, is that it? <laughs> Or Dakar, right? Like Dakar was like, oh, everyone talks about Senegal whenever they talk about Africa. And I get to Dakar and I'm like, it's kind of dusty. <laughs> and I'd wonder every time I'm coming back on Kenya Airways and Rohasafi, I love Kenya Airways. Do, 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 do. Whenever I would hear that sound, I'm like, I'm going home. And I'd come home, and despite Mombasa Road traffic, I'd get here and I'd be like, damn, why is Kenya so gathered and up to speed and on point, but we're the only ones who can't seem to see it? 
you talk to, gather any Kenyans, especially in a bar, and we'll only talk about what's broken, what's not working, who's doing what, who's, who's corrupt, right? Who has to pay somebody, sleep with somebody, know somebody to get anything. That's our narrative. And the scary thing is that young Kenyans are starting to believe that it's our single story. And so there I was, a bookworm, a red pen was my power, and a frustrated Kenyan. And I said, okay, so I've done you know, all these years about working in public health, and public health is actually about changing norms. Whether it's getting people to wash hands or wear condoms, you're trying to change behavior, right? And so I thought, how about I try and get Kenyans to see themselves the way I truly believe we actually are, instead of just focusing on the broken. How about we see ourselves as this nation where Lu when Lupita stands up there and says, no dream is valid, we're like, that's our person. Mm -hmm. Yes, when Kipchoge is like, no human is limited, we're like, our people, please. Did you see the crowds in Eldoret? Did a shiver go up your spine as he was crossing that line and he's like, I see you, I see you. And we're like, boss, took a pomocha. Yes. <laughs> I want us to be the Kenyans who, when we have terrible things like Westgate happen to us and do sit, we chomoka in the morning, we make tea, we go round the buildings in lines ready to give blood because our fellow Kenyan has fallen. Those are the stories that I want us to focus on because that's us, it's who we are. Unfortunately, it's not what we give airtime to. So what I did after many years of doing the right thing, yes, having great jobs, which allowed me to see things in a very different way and gave me the opportunity to actually understand the innate gifts and talents that I was endowed with. I took, I call it my left turn because it really was, um, wasn't the next step. And I'm a very logical person. See, I told you I'm a firstborn and we do the right thing. So the next step in my career was meant to be my boss's job. And in 2016, I would be in interviews and I was headhunted for the equivalent and I'd be like, yeah, I can do it, but Rojo, the heart is just not feeling like it needs to do this. And so I took a left turn and decided, I just want to tell stories. <laughs> and my mother, like Winnie's, had a moment where she was like, do you want to do it? <laughs> but thankfully, I had a very supportive husband who was like, um, OK, you know what? Go do you. We got this. And so I set up a little storytelling platform called Paukwa that's all about celebrating the positive that's around us each and every day in people who, by just showing up, doing them, being tenacious, having a little grit and a bit of passion, are actually the nation builders of this country. So we focus on telling stories about people. We focus on telling stories about places in Kenya. Maybe the little bits of history that you never knew. Who can tell me what's the oldest house of worship in this country? Anybody? Rabbi, no, uh-huh. My Mahio, no, 1926. Huh? Koja Mosque, no. Mm -hmm. No, no. Okay, so let me put you all out of your misery. Congo Mosque in Kwale, 900 AD. The oldest still functioning House of Worship is the St. Francis Xavier Chapel in Malindi, built in 1452. So anybody who told you that the British are the ones who brought Christianity? Huh? It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but these are the bits of history that we are never told because our history in our schools was inherited from a system that was meant to do one thing and that was to subjugate us. And then our politicians took it and did another thing use our history to divide us. So Kenya doesn't belong to a handful of communities. 
Kenya belongs to 44 communities, and because of those 44, we are strong. And I want us each and every day to celebrate our diversity. I want Kenyan kids to grow up being proud of being Kenyan children and understanding just how lucky they were to be born in this year country. So, if you are interested in telling the story of who we really are, and hearing the story of who we really are, and celebrating ordinary Kenyans, instead of the stories that we are told by politicians about who we should be, then please, take out your phone, go on your favorite social media um, platform, whether it's Instagram, or WhatsApp, or, or Facebook, or whatever it is, find Paukwa stories, share Paukwa stories, and let's get this virus of positivity going, because it's real. Thank you.